and they've been done together for more than 2,000 years. So the next dance is an example of how dances can also be acting and storytelling. In this dance, the story of Vishnu, he comes to earth when there's a terrible flood and a demon steals the holy Vedas, the sacred books, and he saves them for you and you and me. Wearing beautiful ornaments, he comes as a fish, a giant fish. Can you make a fish, put one hand on top of the other and turn your thumbs around. Another time, he came as a tortoise, and to make a tortoise, you have one hand on top of the other, curl your fingers down and your little fingers out, and that's a tortoise. He came and scooped up the world and held it on his strong back. Vishnu, who holds the conch shell, the seashell that you listen to. Another time, as a wild boar, a giant boar, sitting with the long, long tusks of a boar, he held the world up on the sharp tusks. Now in America, in the West, we think that there's a man in the moon, but in India, there's a rabbit in the moon. So it looked like the rabbit in the moon. Another time yet to come, he comes as a king riding a horse. When the world is filled with evil, he comes like a shooting star, scoops up everyone who's bad, Vishnu, who sleeps on the snake, the giant snake Shesh, for thousands of years, comes as Kalki, the man on the horse. So this dance, which comes from a poem from the 12th century, is about Vishnu and shows you how the acting is combined with the dance, the rhythm, and the music. Dasha Vitar. Thank you. 
Does it look a little bit like it has stars on it? Yes. Good, you have very good imagination. Now this King Bhagavachandra also imagined that when Radha was dancing, she appeared above the clouds in the sky too. So use those good imaginations again and see if this doesn't look something like clouds. Does that look a little bit like clouds? Yeah. Well, most of you have got very good imaginations. Now, the music that you're going to hear with this dance from Money For is quite different than the music you're used to hearing. You'll hear a flute, a drum, a singer, and some cymbals, and I'd like to show you what some of these musical instruments look like and sound like. First of all, the Money For drum. Now this drum has two sides and the blacking on both sides gives it more variety of sounds than you can get out of a plain drum with only a regular drum head. Another sound that you'll hear will be a very high-pitched ringing. These small cymbals are used to keep the rhythm in Manipuri dance because even though the dancing is very flowing, the rhythm is important. Now in this dance, Radha comes out into the Ras Lila and she begins to describe Krishna. He's a lot like the Pied Piper. He plays a flute, and when you hear it, you want to follow. She says, he's like the blue-green lotus. Can you put your wrists together like this and turn them around? Good, you've got something like a flower. And she says that he looks like the blue lotus because Krishna's face is blue. And he always wears a peacock feather. I want to show you a mask of what Krishna looks like with his blue face and his peacock feathers. Now in this dance, Radha describes Krishna and she says first that he's like the blue-green lotus. He plays his flute and she says, look my friend, how handsome he is. He's like the dark storm clouds in the sky when it's been dry too long and we need the rain, and he steals my heart. Again, he's like the storm clouds and he steals my heart. His beautiful ornaments, and when his flute calls out my name, Radha, Radha, I hear it and I want to be with him always. Now while you're watching this dance, you'll see that all of the movements are circles and curves and figure eights with my head, my hands, and my whole body. See if you can follow this curving line and watch and see if it never stops from the beginning until the dance is over.
far I've shown you how the girls and the women dance in Manipur, but now I'd like to show you how the boys and men dance. In India, boys wear a kind of wrapped up pants from loose cloth, and that's where the idea for baggy pants came here. They got a lot of ideas for fashions from India, and this is one of them. The name of the pants in India is called a dhoti, and this is a dhoti, and this very bright golden color is only worn by Krishna. Now because Krishna is so important in all of the stories and legends, he wears even more beautiful ornaments and decorations than Radha. He wears another belt behind, like this. Another on the side. And again, one in front. Now in the stories, Krishna was not only a cow herder, but he was actually a prince. So naturally, being a prince, he has to wear a crown. And the crown that Krishna wears is one of the most beautiful crowns that I've ever seen. I'm going to show it to you and see if you don't like it also. Isn't this a nice crown? At the top, you can see the peacock feather that he always wears. This is the kind of crown worn by royalty, kings, queens, princes, princesses in Manipur. And you can even see some of the stars, just like on Radha's skirt. Now in this dance, Krishna is a young man, young boy, about your age. He's not telling a story. He's just dancing because it's a pleasure to dance and he likes to entertain his friends. While I'm doing the dance, see if you can tell if Krishna's ever playing his flute while he dances.
questions about the dances or the costumes, if you do have a question, raise your hand up high. Yes? How long does it take to dance like this? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. She says, how does it take to learn to dance like this? Well, dancing is something that you never really finish learning. You're always learning. Every time I dance, I, I'm practicing. I started dancing when I was a little girl, doing modern dance and ballet, and then I've been doing Indian dance for about 15 years, but I'm still very much learning. You never stop. Yes? Uh, how, do you, how do you make the costumes? That's a good question. She said, how do I make the costumes? You can't go to a store to get these costumes. Not in America and not even in India, because all of these costumes are made out of specially woven silk or cotton, silver, you go to the ornament maker, you have to go to the special people, the artists and the craftsmen who make the things for the dance. So for the jewelry, I go to the silversmith, I tell him what designs I want and he makes it. And for these, I go to the costume maker and decide which patterns and colors, there's a few choices, and he makes it. And the same thing with all of the things. At the back of the stage, you can see decorations, and those are embroideries made by hand. That means someone took a needle and thread, and they made all of those designs. So everything is handmade. Do we have another question? Yes? Uh, is the people really looking like this? Do they really look like that? Well, that's a good question. People all over the world, and especially in India, have got very good imaginations. And if they want to show the qualities of somebody, they use their imagination. Now, nobody can know what God really looks like. But, for instance, in India, they know that elephants are very wise. They're very intelligent animals. So they wanted to show the quality of being wise and intelligent. So they imagined that the God of wisdom, remover of troubles, would look like an elephant. But I don't think that most people think there's really uh, a character with that exact face, but it shows the qualities. The same way any god is just using your imagination, what they look like. Okay? Now, in India, we not only have dancing, but we have lots of other things like puppetry. And here on the raft, I have some puppets from a part of India called Rajasthan in the center part. Let me show you on the map. Who knows what you call a puppet with strings? What do you call it? Do you know? Does anybody know? A puppet with strings is called a marionette. And these marionettes are all kinds of soldiers and kings and queens who tell the stories of the history of Rajasthan. Now this one is a queen, Anarkali, and the king, Jahangir, on the other side. They're carved out of wood, and there's no legs, which makes it very easy to make the puppet look like it's walking or dancing or sitting with only these few strings. Now, I have some more of these puppets, and I have some music that the puppeteers use for their puppet shows. And I'd like to ask some people who are sitting up tall who would like to come up and work a puppet. But I never call on anybody who says, ooh. And you come up, mm -hmm. and uh, young lady in the white shirt, stripes, yes. And uh, this young man with, yeah, okay. And this young lady, and in the orange, here. Yeah, and you. Yes, yeah, you come up. Okay, let's see, okay, I think that's enough. You take this one, and when, after I give you the puppets, you can use the puppets to maybe walk forward or take a bow.
Now, in Rajasthan, the puppets don't have voices. They just use whistles to pretend, uh, pretend voices. This horse and rider got all twisted up. He must have been doing too many tricks. <laughs> okay, let me put the music on for you. Now I'll give you just the horse.